Volatility rises and stocks drop today. Are we in the early innings of a correction coming in our markets? We have all of your market news and updates that you need to know for the day today. But first, the only thing I ask you to do is hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It's free 99. It also is my birthday, so I would appreciate it. And let's get started. You can also see crypto specifically bitcoin is down about three percent today which in the grand scope of things not a big deal crypto has run a lot you're still sitting at almost sixty nine thousand dollars but you are down about two thousand dollars today and you're heading into the halving event which is going to be extremely volatile potentially send bitcoin up even further maybe maybe in the short term it could be a sell the news event but when stocks and crypto are down, you want to pay a little bit of attention because it could mean just broader risk off appetite for the day today. And especially if crypto being as bullish as it has been is down while stocks are down that haven't been as bullish as crypto. Maybe that means a little bit more downside could be expected for stocks. I guess that could be the simplistic way to think about this. We had some data come out this morning that could explain the breakdown in the markets. It was ISM manufacturing PMI. You also got S&P global manufacturing PMI. This number actually missed coming in at 51.9. The estimate was 52.5, but ISM manufacturing PMI beat expectations pretty much across the board coming in at 50.3. So you're now positive again on manufacturing anything above 50 is considered expansionary. The estimate, though, was 52 point, uh, 48.3. So you definitely beat the expectations there. Not too much, but it was a good two point or so beat. The data that we had this morning was ISM manufacturing PMI. This number came in at 50.3. The estimate was 48.3. So you beat by about two points and now manufacturing according to ism is positive again anything above 50 is considered expansionary anything less than 50 is considered contractionary and you've been under 50 for a while here in your manufacturing indexes ism manufacturing employment came in at 47.4 the estimate was 46 construction spending month over month came in a lot weaker than expected at negative 0.3 percent estimate was positive 0.4 percent but here are the two individual readings from the ism manufacturing that caused stocks I believe to sell off a little bit today. It is your ISM manufacturing new orders. This came in at 51.4. The estimate was 49.5. So really just stronger than expected, not giving the Fed a reason to start cutting rates. But prices, prices came in at 55.8. The estimate was 52.5. So this beat expectations big time, showing that prices are still going up in manufacturing. That's not a good sign for other parts of the economy. If manufacturing has been in a slump for the last 18 months or so, and their prices are continuing to go up, what does that say about goods? Do we start to see a resurgence in goods inflation? Services? Yeah, I wouldn't even think that's falling anytime soon based on this data the percent of stocks today above their 50-day moving average is down 5.6 percent but i guess a simpler way to think about this is 3.7 percent of all stocks fell under their 50-day moving average today overall 62 and a half percent of stocks are above their 50-day moving average you have been on a nice uptrend from the lows that you've seen about mid to early february you've seen a slight broadening out of the markets over the past couple of weeks. Now, you're nowhere near the highs where we were when you were seeing a broad-based rally and you really peaked out here on December 28th. That's really when the broad-based rally ended and it became all about AI and money started to get concentrated into those AI names and, well, there was selling in other stocks. I think most notably today, you're actually seeing the volatility index, the VIX, up over 7%. The Russell is definitely having a, a poor day today, down about 0.75%. The Dow is the second worst performer, 
down 0.6%, the S&P is down a third of 1%, and the NASDAQ is barely right here, down about a tenth of 1%. But that VIX up 7%, that normally doesn't happen unless the markets are down a lot more than what they are today. So what is the VIX for anyone that is confused? Well, the VIX measures volatility, right? And it really measures the S&P 500 puts and calls. So if there's more puts being bought on any given day than calls, and depending on what that skew is, the VIX rises. If there's more calls being bought than puts, again, depending on the skew, the VIX falls. The VIX has been very low for a while. Typically, when you see spikes like this, especially on days like today, where you're not getting you know, too much crazy index level downside. It's not like it's a 2% down day on the NASDAQ or the S&P. Well, it's days like today you want to take notice because a small drop is prompting a lot of people, a lot of funds to go out and buy put protection on their portfolio. Now, I think this is another very kind of simple way to think about things. Q1, you had almost a 10% gain on the index level. Q2 is not going to do that again. Who knows what Q2 is going to do? So now that you are in the first day of Q2, some people are like, hey, we might just want to sit out this next quarter because we probably need to see a correction. After all, most hedge fund and institutional fund managers believe the markets have run too far too quick. I think the real question is, do we get a catalyst? Do we get news that actually drives the markets materially lower? Without any big bad news, I think you could just be in for a really choppy sideways trading action. With that said, if there is a week to get some news that could sell markets off, it's probably this week. Tomorrow, we are going to get Jolt job openings. Now, think about it like this. If your local restaurant is looking to hire five employees, they're probably doing quite well. If they cut that down to three, they're probably still doing well. If they cut that down to one, well, okay, things are not terrible. If they cut that to zero and they're no longer looking to hire and maybe they were a couple months ago, that's not good. Or even if they start to reduce workers, that's even worse. Well, Jolt's job openings measures the amount of job openings out there in the U.S. economy. If you see a big drop here, then that just means maybe companies are not doing as well as maybe we thought right? And that data comes out tomorrow morning. To the contrary, if we see more job openings, that means the economy is probably doing quite well. And your local businesses are also probably doing quite well. In 2024, it's all going to be about jobs and the state of the consumer. If the consumer continues to spend money, market logic is that means companies will come in with their earnings and earnings expectations will be met and you'll be able to justify valuations. But if let's say the consumer slows down, let's say we get closer to a recession and they're just not spending as much money, people out there in the economy, what does that mean? Well, maybe if earnings expectations are, let's say, $245 for EPS for the S&P 500 this year, if that scenario happened, what if EPS comes in at $220? Then you think you're trading at a 21 times multiple. Today, you really could be trading at a 24 or 25 times multiple if earnings come in lower than expected. And that's why you can get a little bit of a sell-off when markets are this highly valued if you do see signs that maybe inflation is going to be higher. Maybe that means the odds of a recession are going to grow over time. So the Jolt's job openings, long story short, will be very important coming out tomorrow. You will also get a speech from Fed Fed Bowman. That'll be at 1010 in the morning. Fed Williams will speak at noon. Fed Mester will speak at noon as well tomorrow. This is all Eastern Standard Time. And Fed Daily will speak at 1.30 p.m. as well tomorrow. So a bunch of Fed speakers. And again, I just want to point this out. The dot plot got a lot more bearish in the last Fed meeting, but the markets did not take it as such. The markets just looked at the aggregate average uh, rate that FOMC members were expecting by the end of this year, and they just ran with it. Three rate cuts, they said, perfect, fine, that's awesome, we're bullish. Whereas markets actually expected less cuts in 2025, 
while the Fed expected less cuts in 2025, less cuts in 2026, and the longer term rate for the first time ever just went positive. You can also see here the most dovish Fed official, their prior estimate for the federal funds rate by the end of 2024 was 3.9%, and they revised that up to 4.4%. So you were very much borderline pricing in two rate cuts from the Fed. I don't think any Fed official you, you're going to talk to right now, by and large, expects to cut rates three times. Like, really? I haven't heard a single Fed official that has said that. So if we get maybe tomorrow some of these Fed officials saying, yeah, we could probably cut rates three times. We've seen a lot of progress on inflation. That's great. That's going to help support our markets. But if you get more Fed officials that say, yeah, we're just going to have to wait and see what the data looks like. We may cut rates once, but that sounds like about it for this year. That's a little problematic. And sentiment from retail investors is still looking pretty dang bullish on the S&P 500 on stock twits. You have sentiment of 58 today. Yesterday over the weekend, it was 69. So people still feeling pretty bullish on the S&P 500. Message volume sitting at 45. Yesterday was at 33. Over the weekend, that makes sense. Message volume increases once stocks open. And the participation ratio is at 55. But I will point out, if people are this bullish still on the S&P 500, well, usually that means you can still be set up for downside. If everyone's bullish, that's precisely when the market makers and other market participants like to pull a switcheroo and send the markets the other direction. Judging off of the last AI investor sentiment survey where 50% of investors were bullish, I would say this is probably an opportune time for markets to fall because everyone seems like they're pretty dang bullish. Neutral investors are at 27.6% and bearish investors at 22.4%. JP Morgan recently came out and said the S&P 500 could be prone to a 20% plunge amid this market rally. JP Morgan warns of a potential 20% S&P 500 drop, citing overpriced stocks and ignore geopolitical and inflation risks. And I do agree with JP Morgan. I mean, the markets have been ignoring things for a while now, but a 20% pullback from here, I would have to see some bad earnings. I would have to see some more bad inflation data. I would have to see the Fed turn bearish. They are still very, very hawkish. Well, by them, I mean, Jerome Powell is, 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 is very, very dovish. I don't know if we get a 20% downside crash essentially for no reason like jp morgan suggests but if we get a reason it's definitely possible that can happen jp morgan does tend to be a little bit more conservative a little bit more on the bearish side they were bearish in 2023 they were bearish in 2022 they were bearish uh 2021 so take that as well with a grain of salt the key takeaways of what jp morgan just said Number one, JP Morgan warns a potential out of the blue stock market correction due to excessive crowding in top performing stocks. Despite a strong first quarter, concerns arise from limited upside surprises and increasing risk, including potential impacts of AI innovation and political factors. JP Morgan holds the lowest year in S&P 500 target among major banks at 4,200, anticipating nearly a 20% drop. Dubrovko, Lucas, Bugis, JP Morgan, Chase, and company's chief global equity strategist has raised concerns about the sustainability of the current five-month rally in U.S. equities. Despite the S&P 500 index tracking for a 10% return in the first quarter and marking its fifth consecutive month of gains, Lucas warns of potential risks. He highlights the dangers of excessive crowding in the market's best performing stocks, such as the Magnificent Seven, and the historical precedent for corrections following such crowding. Lucas points to recent significant drops in Tesla and Apple as indicators of possible future market corrections. Which, that is true. Tesla was down about 30% in Q1 alone, and Apple has not done well also. Typically, you're not going to get these stocks just crashing and the markets continuing to go high, higher. I mean, Apple today is at $169. Apple is almost back to your October, November lows. Should other stocks, should the markets be back down to those October, no October, November lows? Probably not. But should they have seen some downside? 
probably. Markets are just sitting here at these, what is almost all-time highs, whereas on a technical basis, you've actually broke down. On a technical basis, the NASDAQ here, the triple Qs, looks pretty dang bad. You're under this trend line. You found a lot of resistance here today. Likely that does set you up for a move down to about 438 on the triple Qs. Question is, do you find support there? If not, you fall to that 50-day moving average. And if you don't find support there, if there's bad news this week or whatever the reason is, then you fall further. Then you have a larger gap to fill down about to about 420. And I really don't think this is rocket science or I have a crystal ball here, but typically when you just go up to the right, pretty consistently in one of the most bullish rallies the markets have ever seen. That's usually short-term negative. Short-term, you can expect a pullback, but over the next 12 months, you do tend to see higher stock prices following this aggressive of a rally to the upside. So longer term, you probably want to be bullish, especially on certain sectors of our markets like interest rate sensitive names. As the Fed starts to cut rates, those should benefit. But in the near term, it does make sense to be a little bit more hesitant and careful and conservative about what your estimates are for upside. Markets are fully valued if everything goes perfect. That's that's the crazy part of right crazy part about right now. If everything goes perfect, you get 11% S&P earnings growth, you get all of these other things, soft landing, Fed that can start to cut rates three times in 2024. The markets are already priced for that. That's not going to be like good news. We already know that. The markets are already expecting that. If anything less than that happens, Earnings come in a little bit weak. The Fed only cuts rates once or twice, maybe none in 2024. Then, yeah, you could be setting up for potentially 20% downside from here. But is that going to happen all at the same time or out of the blue as JP Morgan is suggesting? I don't think so. Your next big catalyst will specifically be earnings just broadly for the markets, earnings, and then your data that you have this week. You do have non-farm payrolls coming out on Friday. The ADP employment change will also be very important. That's kind of a heads up to what your jobs report could look like. So uh, that will be important as well. Uh, and the ADP, what comes out Wednesday, you will also get ISM services PMI on Wednesday. Federal Powell will speak on Wednesday. On Thursday, you really don't have too much. Bunch of Fed speakers, some bond auctions. And then Friday is your bigger data. But I do think the markets, broadly speaking, are probably going to fall in Q2. You're probably going to see a correction. Now, I don't know what the percent down is going to be in Q2. Wouldn't surprise me if you saw a 5 to 10% pullback in Q2. And then you kind of rally towards the end of Q2 as we get closer to Fed rate cuts that the markets are currently pricing in for June. But it is close. 51.5% odds of a cut in June, 45.8% chance of a continued pause through June. On Friday, you had 39.6% odds of a pause through June. So no cut, no hike, nothing through June. Today, it's 45.8%. So you are up, what, over 5% based on the data that we got on Friday and the data that we got today from manufacturing PMI. That's really the big reason why stocks are selling off today. And I think markets are going to have to come to terms with a Fed that's not going to be cutting rates three times. The dot plot essentially lied to you. And inflation is going to be stickier. So... I mean, if inflation does start to rise, you may not see rate cuts for a long time. Now, do I think the Fed's going to be hiking rates? Probably not. Remember what we used to talk about all all of the time? If inflation is, let's say, 5%, typically you have to get the Fed funds rate higher than the rate of inflation to bring inflation down. Today, the Fed funds rate's 5.25%, 5.5% or so, that, that range, And inflation on a year-over-year basis is like 3%. So you would have to see inflation really start to rise again for the Fed to start raising rates. And I think that's really why that's not even a topic of conversation.
10 months, if inflation does continue to rise at the pace that it is, maybe that would be a topic of conversation again. But I think just not getting a rate cut in 2024 would be really bad news for markets. Also, keep in mind, it's been very strange. The Russell has been underperforming so much, and you've really seen a concentration in your big tech names, your AI stocks, when, if the expectation truly is soft landing, meaning no recession, and three rate cuts, shouldn't you see small cap stocks and interest rate sensitive names outperform? Wouldn't that be a good market? for you know interest rate sensitive names small caps yeah but that's not what you've seen happen so very strange and i think you are just generally speaking overdue for a correction in the broader markets now that could be starting here now essentially you have broken down on the nasdaq if you did see a 10 percent fall from here that would put the Nasdaq back to about 400. Um, and that seems like it could happen. You'd probably need to see some bad news, though, right? Bad data, bad news from the Fed, who knows, something. If you were to hit that 100-day moving average, which looks a little bit more likely to me, that would be almost a 7% pullback, taking the triple Qs back to about 440. And that's kind of my base case assumption from here. But I don't know when that happens. I don't know if that is starting today and that's going to happen this week and over the next coming weeks. I don't know if that happens based on big tech earnings. I don't know if that happens based on NVIDIA earnings that are going to be like two months away from now. Keep in mind, they report like way, way late after the quarter ends. So I don't exactly know when this will happen, but I think it's clear it's starting. Does it start slow? Does it start quickly? I think the next couple of days will have a lot more clarity on that. And with that said, good news is if you are someone that trades and you're looking to hedge out your portfolio, not financial advice, but option premiums are pretty dang cheap right now because everyone is so bullish. So let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section. Hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel. You guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.